Hello guys, welcome once more to Class Online. My name is Tutor Dami, and in this edition, we shall be looking at Jam Physics 2014, question number one to number five, and we shall be simplifying it. Now, just stay tuned. You will get to learn quite some things that will better help you destroy physics as we go. Now, don't forget that if you learn anything from this video, click on like button. We have loads of content to send to you that will better help you destroy Jam. Let's check number one. Now, unfortunately, number one is gone. Number one is not accessible. And let's check out number two. What is the least possible error encountered when taking measurement with a meter rule? Now, is it um, one millimeter, 0 0.5 millimeter, 0 0.2 millimeter, 0 0.1 millimeter? Now, this question is simply asking for what is the accuracy of a meter rule? Do you have any idea? Now, it is simple, very, very simple. It is just what I have here is what 0 0.1 centimeter. But if you change it into millimeter, that means that if it, you know 10 millimeter make one centimeter. So if you want to change to, to millimeter, just multiply it by 10. So this is for a meter rule. You just go from 0 0.1 centimeter times 10 because 10 millimeter make one centimeter. So I'll time by 10 and I'll get one. So the answer is one, 1 1.0, 1.0 millimeter or 0 0.1 centimeter. And that now, but take note. Again, next time, if you were asked about um, tape rule, is the same thing with your meter rule. That's the minimum error that must be encountered. Should not be more than 0 0.1 centimeter. Then also, vinyl is 0 0.01, and my micrometer is the smallest. It is 0 0.001. I'm sorry, 0 0.01 millimeter, not centimeter. And that is those are the um, accuracy or the minimum errors that these machines should have. And that is the answer for number two. Let's check out number three now. A quantity which requires magnitude and direction to be specified is what? Now, you know, any quantity with magnitude and direction is called a vector quantity. Why scalar are quantities that have magnetic or size only? Now, but that means one of them, which of this option is a, is a vector that has magnitude or size and direction? Okay, now is it distance? Is distance a vector quantity that has magnitude and direction? No. Displacement is a vector quantity. What about um, mass? Is mass a vector? No. Temperature is not also a vector. So the ones that are not vector are scalar quantities. So scalar quantities have only magnitudes only. You can see distance is scalar because you cannot you can say um two meter. That is okay. That is the magnitude of what the person walked. Okay, that is scalar. You don't have to say in what direction. If it's just say two meter, like I say, um, um, a maker traveled two meter. Okay, um, two meter is distance. Okay, but that is okay. That's fine. Then speed, I can say he was moving at two meter per second. That is also fine. That's the speed. But for vector, you must also say direction. So if you say like we have a displacement for vector, you you cannot say um, could he travel two meters. You must also say in what direction, two meter northward or eastward or westward or southward. That makes it because you mentioned direction and the magnitude. You are talking about um, displacement, not distance, and that means it is a vector quantity because. It's a vector quantity because it discourse displacement. It's a vector because it discourse displacement, not distance. And that is the answer. Answer is vector. A vector quantity is any quantity that has magnitude and direction such as displacement or velocity. And that is the answer for that question. It has direction and magnitude and direction. It is a vector. And displacement is the only vector in the list. And that makes displacement the correct answer. To number three, it has both size and direction, and that is it. Now, number four, now electrical potential, torque, kinetic energy, momentum. Which of these quantities listed above are vector? The same type of question, right? Can we check what we used before? Now, we have you know, vector says could know something that has magnitude and direction, right? Now, which of them has magnitude and direction? Let's check that out. Now, we have displacement, which of them is here? Here I have um okay, these are easier ones. Let's see. Let's see this table here. Electrical moment. Um we don't have we have quite a list here, but among them all, we don't have any of them on my list here. 
Okay, now let's see. Electrical potential is potential energy. It is not a vector, it is a scalar because it has only magnitude. You cannot say electric potential is this in this direction. We don't mention direction for electric potential. It's just a magnet that has a number but not a direction. Then torque. Then kinetic energy is just an energy. It doesn't have direction. Then momentum. You know, momentum is also among the vector. Let's check it out. Momentum is among, see, that's momentum there. Momentum is among the vector quantity and as small as that. So now let's check. So the answer is therefore going to be option two and four. Torque and momentum. You know, torque is the is this is the starting force because it is it is a force and anything force is among the vector quantity. So torque is the starting force of a machine. That's generated on layman's language. Torque is the machine is the kind of energy or, or force that a machine used to to begin moving. So if you want your bicycle to move and you start by pressing the pedal that initial force that you put in is to it, it it is there to overcome the torque of the machine so torque is if is a kind of force and that makes it a vector so the answer is torque and momentum they are both vector quantity and both electric potential and kinetic energy kinetic energy is just energy it is not moving in any direction it's just pure energy it's not directional so you can see that the um kinetic energy of the machine is Two meet, um, is two is two joule in the north direction. That's wrong. It is just two joule, only magnitude only. There is no direction. So the answer is just torque and momentum, and that makes the answer to um, option D. Two, um, sorry, one one. That's that, that's two. Roman figure two and four, and that makes the answer number four to be D. Number five. Which type of motion do the wheel of a moving car undergo when your when your daddy's car is running on the road? What kind of motion is that? Is it random? Mm, it's not random because random is anyhow. Does your car run anyhow? Does it run this way and this way and this way? Just, just anyhow without any direction? No. So random A is off. B, rotational and oscillatory. Now, you know the word oscillatory is to and fro. Does your car go forward and backward? Forward, backward, forward, backward. No, that's not how a car runs. B is wrong. Then translational and rotational. That sounds true to me, and that is the answer. The reason is because transitional, transitional means from one point to the other. The word transitional means from one point to the other, and the word rotational means rolling, like the tires rotate, right? Now, the, last, the, the D is vibratory and translational. Does the car vibrate? No, it is just translational and oscillatory. So, if you have a car, the tires are translating forward. That's why the car is moving forward. But also, it is also rotational. The tires are rolling. That is rotational motion. So it is um, option C, translational and rotational motion. And that is the answer to that question. And that brings us to the end of this video. There are much videos to send to you that will better help you understand things. All you have to do is to click on the like button and we'll get to reach you with better content that will make you understand. And you'll be able to do a jam. So guys, until we see you again, take care of yourself and bye for now.